Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. And if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. The next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to go back to the limit of the difference quotient version of the def of the derivative. But this time there's going to be a slight difference because we're going to leave a out of it. We're not going to look at a particular x value a. We're going to leave just x a variable in our derivative and it's going to be its own function. It's going to be a function that represents the slope of the original function at any point. In other words, it's going to be a formula for the slope of the function at any point that we want to look at. Okay, so in this next problem, I'm going to use f prime of x, not a, f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x. Those x's are going to stay in there. They're going to stay variables. It says, example, find f prime of x given that f of x equals x squared plus x. f prime of x means we're looking for a formula for the slope of f at any x value. It's actually going to be a new function, a new function where the y values represent the slopes of the other function. Okay, so let's go ahead and find this solution. When you're taking the limit of the difference quotient, it's helpful to write down number one, what f of x is equal to, in this case, x squared plus x. Number two, what f of x plus h is equal to. So in this case, that would be x plus h squared plus x plus h. We're just replacing the x in the function with x plus h. And then we're going to find f of x plus h minus f of x and simplify it a bit. So actually, let me finish simplifying f of x plus h first. So when you square x plus h, what are you going to get when you square x plus h, the quantity? You are not going to get x squared plus h squared, right? Remember, this is a common error to avoid. x plus h squared does not equal x squared plus h squared. So foil it out, x plus h times itself, and what do you get? So you get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then we still have plus x and plus h. All right, so now we're going to take what we found in step two and subtract step one. So we have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h minus x squared plus x. And so what's going to happen is the x squared and x squared cancel, the x and the x cancel. And so we're just left with... 2xh plus h squared plus h. And I believe I actually said in step three to divide that by h. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so each of these terms has a factor of h that you can divide out. So this is going to be equal to 2x plus h plus one at as long as h doesn't equal zero. So then now let's find the derivative f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And by the way, you do definitely want to memorize this. Okay, work a few homework problems and you'll probably memorize it pretty quickly if you haven't already. So that's going to be the limit as h goes to zero of 2x plus h plus 1. Now be careful here, only the h is going to zero. Nothing is happening to x. So it's just gonna be two x plus zero plus one or two x plus one. So we just found that f prime of x is equal to two x plus one. This is a formula for the slope of f at any particular x value. So now it says uh, in this next example, graph f of x equals x squared plus x. Where does its derivative appear to be zero? Confirm this using f prime of x from the previous example. f of x equals 
x squared plus x, that's a parabola. Um, one way to graph it would be to find its x-intercepts and then look in between, because in between we should have our vertex because of the symmetry of a parabola. Or you could use other graphing techniques that you've learned in the past. I'm going to go ahead and draw a little graph over here. I know that x squared plus x equals zero when x is zero or negative one. So we have an x-intercept at zero and we have an x-intercept at negative one. The vertex would have to be halfway in between at one half. So I'm going to find f of one half. So that's going to be one fourth plus one half, which is three fourths. Oh, that's a negative one half, my bad. It's still going to turn out the same. It's still going to be three fourths. So I'm going to draw three fourths here. Let's say it's there. And then it would look like this. Okay, so based on this graph, where does the derivative of the function f appear to equal zero? Where does the derivative of the function f appear to equal zero? So remember, the derivative is a slope with a tangent line, so you want to picture tangent lines and think about where it would be zero. Okay, Armando says negative one-half. That's correct. Why? Why did you think that the derivative would be zero at that point? Okay, because we would have a horizontal tangent line, very good. So this is where the slope would be zero. All right, now it says, confirm this using f prime of x from the previous example. In the previous example, f prime of x turned out to be two x plus one. So, f prime of x equals 2x plus 1. So how can we confirm that the derivative is equal to 0 at negative 1 half? What would I do? How would I use f prime of x there? Okay, there's two ways to go about it. One way would be to set 2x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve for x. Or yes, Michael, we can just plug in in this case. So we would have f prime of negative one half would be two times negative one half plus one, which would be negative one plus one, which would be zero. Okay, so that confirms that the derivative at one half is zero. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That will help other students to find the video.